Okay, now scientists believe that the plants evolved from cyanobacteria or what you call your blue-green algae. Now you know that your blue-green algae are prokaryotic organisms, okay? But this is believed to be the ancestor of all the plants that we have now. Now uh, scientists believe so because of their common characteristics. Some common characteristics between your blue-green algae and your plants are found on your screen, okay? So first one, they both have their cellulose cell walls. Again, the cell walls are made up of cellulose. Now remember that cell walls are the secondary boundary or the secondary, secondary covering of your plants. We don't have this in any other types of cells, uh, except maybe for some bacteria. They, some bacteria would have some cell walls. But your plants, unlike your animals, would have cell walls. Now, again, in the case of your plants, the cell walls are made up of cellulose, okay? Cellulose cell walls. Now, secondly, they have the same type of chlorophyll. So again, your cyanobacteria, it's a prokaryotic organism. It's also called your blue-green algae, but they both have the same type of chlorophyll. We know that chlorophyll in plants are very important because they use this to harness sun's energy for photosynthesis. Okay, so again, secondary common characteristic would be um, the same type of chlorophyll between your blue-green algae and your plants. Now, third, they also store food as starch, okay? So just like your cyanobacteria, all your plants would store food in the form of starch, okay? Starch or sugar or glucose, all right? So these are the three common characteristics between your blue-green algae and your uh, plants. Now, on the screen here, you have a graphic organizer that's showing you the different classification of plants. We've already talked about the two major types of plants, the two major divisions of plants, and these are your non-vascular plants and your vascular plants. Remember, when you say non-vascular, they don't have your vascular tissues. Your vascular tissues, of course, in plants would be your xylem and your phloem. Okay, now remember that all, both of these vascular tissues would function for transport of materials. Your xylem would function for the transport of water and some nutrients. And of course, your phloem would transport, uh, would, would, uh, transport your food. Okay, so again, xylem is for the transport of water and nutrients, phloem for the transport of food. So if you say non-vascular plants, these are some plants that do not have your xylem nor the phloem. Okay, they don't have their xylem and their phloem. Under this, you have your bryophytes. Okay, the bryophytes, you've also seen this in your warm-up video a while ago. You also have some examples here, your mosses and your liverworts. Now, we are going to the specific types of plants in a few minutes. Now, another division of your plants would be your vascular plants. So again, when you say vascular, they have their vascular tissues, the xylem to transport water and nutrients, and of course, the phloem to transport food. Now, there are two types of vascular plants. There, um, there are some vascular plants that have seeds, and others without seeds. All right, so again, there are two types of vascular plants. Again, when you say vascular, they both have the xylem and the phloem. Now you have some vascular plants without seeds and you'd call this your pteridophytes, okay? These are your pteridophytes. Examples for this would be your ferns and your horsetails. You also have vascular plants with seeds and this would be your angiosperms, okay? One division would be your angiosperms. Angiosperms, these are your flower bearing plants. They have flowers. Some examples of this would be roses and, of course, your fruit trees. Now, you also have your gymnosperms. These are the cone bearing plants. They don't have flowers, they have their seeds um, inside the cones. So, examples of this would be your conifers, your pine trees. All right, so again, your graphic uh, organizer here is showing you the different classification of plants, those without vascular tissue, you'd call them your non-vascular plants. Those with vascular tissue, of course, they are called vascular plants. Under non-vascular plants, you have your bryophytes, examples, mosses and liverworts. Then for your vascular plants, you have two types for this, those without seeds, those are going to be your pteridophytes. And those with seeds, you have two types. Under this, you have angiosperms, your flower-bearing plants, and your gymnosperms or your cone-bearing plants. Okay, I'll go to the specific types of plants now. All right, now the first type of, uh, the, the first phylum of plant that we have here would be our bryophytes, okay? We've already mentioned that they are non-vascular plants, okay? That means they don't have their xylem and their phloem. They only have small leaf-like structures. They also have what you call the rhizoids, 
which are their small root-like structures. Of, of course, the rhizoids would function for the absorption of nutrients, water, and some other materials from uh, the soil. Now, since they don't have their vascular tissue, they don't have their xylem and their phloem, they transport materials by diffusion. Now, you've learned the term diffusion in your bio one last year. Okay, When you say diffusion, this is just a transport of materials from an area where there's more uh, more of that material to an area where there is less of that material, okay? Transport the materials from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. That's diffusion. And uh, because they don't have their xylem, their phloem, they need to be very close to the ground, okay? They need to be very close to the ground. They don't have the transport system. They can't really transport the materials uh, using the xylem or the phloem. And so they stick uh, very close towards the ground. And so we say that they are smaller than your vascular plants, okay? They're usually, they grow smaller than your vascular plants. So of course, you have your examples here, your mosses and your liverworts. All right, now the next uh, phylum of uh, plants that we have here would be our pteridophytes. When you say pteridophytes, these are already vascular plants, so that means they have vessels, they, they have your, their xylem and their phloem, but they are seedless, okay? So again, these are vascular but seedless plants. They don't have any seeds. They reproduce through a special way, and we call this method your alternation of genes or alternation of generations. Okay, so your pteridophytes, again, they're vascular. They have both the xylem and the phloem, but they don't have any seeds. And so they reproduce through alternation of generations. Now, what is this alternation of generations? Uh, it is shown on your screen here. When you say alternation of generations, there are two generations that can be found in the reproduction, reproductive cycle of your pteridophyte. Example, your fern. There is the sporophyte. The sporophyte, this is the, the diploid part of your generations. And of course, you have your gametophyte, the haploid part of your generations. Now, remember, you've already learned the terms diploid and haploid in your bio one last year. Can anyone tell us what the difference is between diploid and haploid? Anyone who'd like to tell us the difference between diploid and haploid? You've learned this from bio one. Okay, so again, when you say diploid, D or di in science and also in, in English, when you hear the term di or the prefix di or D, when you say diploid here, this means two. Okay, so there are two, uh, two types of gametes or two types of genes. So when you say diploid, if your organism is a diploid organism, it has the complete set of genes, okay? It has a complete set of genes. Now, when you say haploid, it only has half of the genes that you need for your organism, okay? It only contains half the amount of your genes, hence the term haploid, okay? And you'd usually find this in your gametes, your sex cells and your sperm cells, your egg cells, your sperm cells, or your sex cells would only be haploid. They'd only have half the amount of genes that you need for a certain organism. Well, when you say diploid, it has a complete set of, of uh, your genes. So in these two generations, the alternation of generations in your, uh, in your pteridophyte or in your fern, there are two types here, or two cycles here, two stages. The first one would be your sporophyte. So you have your sporangium, which is diploid. That means this is the parent organism, okay? It's a parent organism. It has a complete set of genes because it's a diploid. And this would be forming your spores, okay? Your spores, on the other hand, this would um, give you the different gametes that you have here, the sperm cell and the egg cell of your plant. Now, once they reach this stage, the sperm and the egg, you know that this would already be the stage for your gametophyte because these are already your gametes or your haploid, uh, haploid substances, okay? They only have half the amount of the genes. And then later on, of course, the sperm and the egg would be fertilized. Okay, the egg would be fertilized by, by the sperm. A process which we call fertilization and in turn, we can produce the zygote, okay? Your, your fern is going to produce the zygote. Then the zygote, of course, would grow into a mature plant and the process goes on forever. Okay, so this is the alternation of genes in your pteridophytic uh, plants. 
those plants that are vascular, they have both the xylem and the phloem, but they don't have any seeds. Okay, so again, you have your sporangium. This is your parent cell. This is your parent plant. It gives you the spore. The spore would in turn produce the sperm cell and the egg cell, your haploid gametes. Then, of course, your sperm cell is going to fertilize the egg cell. The process is called fertilization. And because of that, a zygote is formed, the embryo is formed, and then this embryo would, uh, of course, go on and grow into a mature plant. Okay, and so the cycle goes on. All right, so these are the different steps in the alternation of genes, which is the process of reproduction in your pteridophytic plants. All right, now we go to the next type of plant that we have here. Your angiosperms, these are your vascular plants. This is one type of your vascular plants with seeds. Okay, so this is a type of plant. It's vascular. It has both the xylem and the phloem, and of course, it has seeds. Okay, so your angiosperm, a common name for this or a common term for this would be your flower bearing plants. Well, now you know that a flower is the reproductive organ of a plant. Your angiosperms are the largest group of plants that exist. Okay, so the most number of species of plants would be angiosperms sperms for our discussion today and this would be your gymnosperms again you found uh gymnosperms under your vascular plants these are still vascular plants but they do not have any seeds okay these are plants without seeds um now since they don't have any seeds they are cone bearing plants okay their cones contain the seeds uh i mean they do not they have the seeds, but they don't have the flower, okay? So we call this the cone-bearing plants. Their cones contain the seeds, and so sometimes we call this naked seeds. And this, their seeds can also be sometimes seen on the leaves or on, also on the bark. So examples of this would be your conifers, your pine trees, your evergreen, those types of plants, 